Hi, I'm going to show you how you can use web browser technology to create a rotoscope. And um, what in particular, what I'm going to do is try to recreate something like this. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but just to show you how to get it set up. And the idea here is to create a, a video that you can then use as a reference graphic, convert it into what you need to, and import it into an editor so that you can start sketching over it and creating the individual frames that make up the rotoscope. Now, I've done this in Adobe Animate. This time I'm going to try using the Wick Editor to show you that you can do it there as well. And the step-by-step -step is all right here. So I've already shot some reference video, and I'm already on to step two, which is I'm going to convert it into something that the Wick Editor can load in. So I'll open up that browser, and I'm going to choose my file. And if I'm really lucky, oh good, it's taking me right to where I want to go to. So I'm going to find some footage that I shot ages ago. Loading it up there, it's an MP4, but it'll also take... Um, AVIs, MOVs, and MKVs as well. I'm going to upload that video and the website is spinning around trying to get it. And once it does it, it's going to give me some options here. First of all, it's going to let me preview it. And so I'm going to preview this and try to find my start and my end point. I can turn down this volume. And I know I want to only collect something. I think I wanted to have my, my head spinning around, but I think I goofed around a little bit. Okay, and I want to start it right about here. Okay, maybe a little bit further. So this is at the 14 second mark. I'm going to say I'd like it to, like to start it at 14 seconds. And how far does it go? Well, one, one revolution will take us to... Is this going to look like... Right there, that looks like 19 seconds, so it's about 5 seconds worth of video that we have to convert. I am going to now adjust the size. This will save a lot of hassle later, and I know I only need about... A, 480 height, so it's going to go auto by 480. And the frame rate, I would like to max that out at 20 frames per second. This is a great converter that's online. There are other ones that will do more for you or less, but um, this isn't bad. So I'm going to hit convert to JPEG, see how long that takes. And honestly, it doesn't take long, and it spills all of these video, all these images out, one after the other, all the way down there. Go to the very bottom, and you can download all of them all at once as a zip file. And I'm going to take that and put that into a relevant folder here in my appropriate folder under rotoscoping and I'm going to make a new folder here for this. I'm going to call it test2 and I'm going to plunk them in there and hit save. Okay, so that's a bunch of the stuff done. Now we have to unpack that zip folder so I'm going to go show that in folder and if you were on a Chromebook you just go to your files after you've un downloaded it and unpacking this thing in Windows it's a right mouse click and you can use whatever utility to extract all the files if you want. If you were using uh, a Chromebook you could just double click the zip file it'll open them all for you. You can control A to select all of them and then you can actually drag them and move them where they have to go and in this case I can do the same thing here too. So a couple of ways you can go at it. I'm going to get rid of that zip folder because I don't need it anymore. All right. So now we want to start using this this thing inside inside the Wick editor. So I'm going back to the Wick editor, and it shows up like this. I've already logged in, and I wanted to show you a trick if you aren't already doing so. It's a small editor. It does a great job, but max out your screen. If you have a uh, download bar at the bottom, get rid of it. And if you can hit the F11 key or the full size button that would extend this up like this to fill your screen, it's going to look a lot better. Now I just did it manually, but F11 on a, on a Windows keyboard or the full size button on your Chromebook will do the same thing. Now we have to import this stuff and put it into a reference layer. Now before we do, I'm going to go change the settings on Wick. Give it a name. Roto2. I'm going to give it a size. And I would suggest 450 by 450 is a good size for this project. And a frame rate, I'm going to use 24 frames per second even though we Actually, actually, I had it render it at 20 frames per second. It's okay. We'll play with time a little bit. Hit apply. Things change in the background. We've got a canvas to work with. Uh, next, we have to start importing all that stuff into the asset library. So I'm going to do that by going to the upload assets button. Click it. Try to find my files. And I'm going to go crazy here and upload all of them. It's a lot of files. Good news is we shrunk the size of them a little bit. So it's not quite as bad as it could have been. And great to have all these little messages, but I hope they go away. Good. And they did. And I'm also going to resize these windows so I can see more of the stuff that I need. Now, this layer here is going to become my reference layer. So I'm going to go up to the inspector at the top, and I'm actually going to name it Ref Layer. So it has that name. And I would like to 
I'm going to drag only a couple of them in here. I'll grab the first two, well, maybe just the first one, drag it, put it on the stage, and you see it's just about that hard to import it. Things are sized about right. What I've lost touch with, though, is where is this inside the stage? So I'm going to do something else. I'm going to hide this layer. I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to go call it Guides or Guidelines. I'm going to drag it on top of my reference layer, which is hidden there. And I am going to give myself a clue as to where this stuff is. So I'm going to go to, say, maybe what I'll do is I'll drag a rectangle here, roughly where I think it should go. Now the inspector will help me customize this a little bit, I think. If I selected that object, oh yeah, I can change the fill color to nothing, I think, I hope. Maybe I can't. As, no, that's swatches. I swear it did. Oh, I see. You have to hit a zero in there to make that go away. Great. My stroke color is, I'm going to make it red so I can spot it. And maybe my stroke thickness. Is there a stroke thickness up there? Scale, size. I got it there. Stroke color, opacity. Hmm. I swear there was something up there that would help me do that. Maybe it should be four. Oh, look at that. There's my stroke thickness right there. So now I can see roughly where this thing is going to go, roughly. And I'm not going to export it with the guides on. I just want to be able to see where things are going to be framed. And you know, while we're doing this, I'm going to just lock this reference layer so I can't make a mistake. Go back to the guides layer. Um, I really would like to have this thing lined up. I'm going to change this reference. I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to move this first frame roughly where I want this thing to be framed for good medium close up. Maybe something like that. And to give myself more guidelines, you know, I'm going to use this and I'll just drag myself a line across here. It more or less shows where my eyes are going to go. More or less. And maybe I'll drag another line vertically, roughly where I think the middle of this thing is going to go. You know, right where the nose is, more or less. Okay, these are just rough guides. You can go back and you can fine tune these things. And I'm drawing these, drawing these things on the guide layer. That's where I want them to be. It might be a good idea. Maybe I should put, um, Maybe some width of how wide I think that head should be, or maybe where the top of the head goes too. You know what? I think I'll do that. Say so that's roughly where I want the top of the head to be. And maybe where the chin goes. Sure. I'll do the same thing. I'm just guessing at where to put it, but I think right about there. Okay, that should do the job pretty well. So now, guides are in place. I'm going to lock that layer. Go back to my reference layer. Make sure it's unlocked. I've got things set. And now I have to start dragging files into place. Now i got frame one there. To get the next frame in place, this is a very, you know, tedious, it's a utility thing to do. I'm going to click, maybe I'll click a couple of frames over, hit a plus and put a keyframe there, and I'll drag that next frame in. But I won't necessarily go, you know what, I'm not going to use every frame. I'm going to use every fifth frame. And I'll drag frame five here for now. Now, my guide layer is gone, but I can stretch that, make that wider so I can see more of what's going on there. And when I go over to this one, now if the guides are there, my guides, oh, my guides aren't there. Great. Did I put the guides in the wrong layer? I did. Okay, so I guess I have to go get those guides here. I'm holding shift. I can grab all those guides. Can I control X, get rid of them, and put them up in my guide layer? Yes, I can. And they go in the right, the exact same place too. So now just to make sure, yep, all my guides are where I want them to be. Deselect that. Lock it again. Okay, let's go to that keyframe again. And now I can start adjusting this thing. I'm just clicking on the, the image and moving it roughly where I want it to be. Keeping in mind this, this head is rotating, so the nose is going to start going to the left of the, the center line. And I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm going to go a couple more over, make a new keyframe. I'm going to go to uh, picture 10 and throw it into place. Select it and just get the, the vertical. I'm going to kind of keep lined up but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to make sure this head is still rotating. That was 10. I'm going to go to 15 now. Drop 15 in. I hope you get the idea. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just giving you an idea of where it goes. By the way, holding shift and hitting an arrow key will move it 10 pixels at a time, so it's way faster to start moving things in place. And I want to keep that center. I'm going to try to keep the center just about sort of where the center of gravity is in the head as it goes around. And I'm going to stretch this frame out. So what I have here are keyframes that are showing the start of the rotation and that will allow me to give me, well that'll give me a reference that I can now trace over. So the last thing I'm going to do, I am going to put one more layer down there. I'm going to roll down here till I get one more and this is where I'm going to start drawing. So I'm going to say draw. 
I'm going to grab this layer. I'm going to put it above my reference layer. You know what? I may even put it above my guide layer because I'm not done with this, but I'll turn off guides for now. You can put all your references in first and then start worrying, worrying about the drawing. But just to get started with this, here's me with a draw layer here. New keyframe already started. I'm going to choose a brush. It's going to be black. The size of it right now is 10. And here's what I suggest. 10 is a pretty big brush. I'm going to roll my wheel mouse in and zoom in a little bit. And suddenly that's not so big. And if I want to pan, I can hit the pan button here and just drag around to sort of recenter this thing. So you decide on how large the brush should be. You can change the size of it. Maybe I'll take it down to about a 7 or so. And I would suggest that what you do is you try to draw the shadows for what's on the face. And that would include things like eyebrows, certainly the eyes, pupils of the eyes. I mean, you can leave a little bit there for the highlight inside the eyes if you want. This is not about being perfect by any means. And I would also suggest do a test. Don't try to do your finished version. This is just a test, just to see how it works. Do about 10 frames, see how it goes. You might decide that you've got to reshoot your reference footage because it's it's really tough to make it look the way you want it to, and you might learn a lot just from doing the first 10 frames and decide that you want to do it again. And again, I would suggest draw the shadows. We're only drawing in one color right now. I wouldn't suggest drawing in multiple colors. So look for where those shadows are. And it's surprising that you do not have to put that much detail in. Neither does it have to be a perfect drawing to come out with really good results. Okay, this has gone on a little long. You're getting the idea. But by the time I'm ready to draw the next graphic, I'm going to go two over, click that, and I would re recreate those same things. You get the idea? By the time you're all done, you'll be able to hit the play button. Now, the play button's not going to do much for us right now because... But we have a, a bunch of extra uh, images in there. If I turn this back on, though, and I adjusted this a little bit, you do start to see what's going to happen with it. Here, I'll change the number of frames back to what it should be. When I hit play, what we're going to get is we're going to get a nice tracing of this stuff, and when we turn off our visibility of a reference layer and our guide layer, we'll get a nice animated graphic of what we want. And finally, remember to hit save. You might want to do this over the course of many days. Um, it saves a file to your local computer that you can open up the next day and continue on. Should work fine. And when your whole thing is completed, you hit that export button and it's going to export the animated GIF for you. So that's it. It's a fairly thorough, I hope, uh, tour of what you can do. Give it a try for yourself and good luck.